ABC News exclusive with Officer Darren Wilson. He's been living in hiding since shooting Michael Brown. We talked about that, what it's like, and what's next for him and his family. Tell us a little bit more about what it's been like since August 9th to essentially be living in hiding. It's actually kind of hard to describe. I mean, I use the word stressful, but that's an understatement. I mean, it's you're always looking. You're always wondering if someone recognized you, if someone is following you, if just every possibility you can think of. Were you out doing normal things, going to the store, taking walks in the neighborhood? At times. I mean, there was sometimes where I had to, you know. Normally, I tried to avoid it. You grew a beard? I did have a beard for a little while. Did that help? I think so. I mean, it was uncomfortable, but I think it helped. Um, it's just, just take precautions, everything you do, everywhere you go, you know, from where you sit in a restaurant to, you know, where you drive, everything, it, everything has to run through your head. It's, all the time you're watching, make sure no one's following you, everything. What's the most important thing you want the American people to know about you right now? We're just simple, everyday, normal people. There's really nothing special or anything about it. We're just normal people. And when you see the parents, when you see the anger, do you think that uh, there's something more that all police can do in your situation. What do you mean by that? I don't know. What, 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 what do you think is at the heart of this anger that is just seems to be seething throughout Ferguson? It seems like there's a lot of anger beneath the surface. I think there's a communication breakdown. Communication has to be reestablished. Between? Everybody. All parties involved. But you feel like you had that in your day-to-day -day work on the force. Yes. I greatly enjoyed working in Ferguson. I did. Put that in the past tense, not going to happen again? I do you really think it's possible? I mean, do you think they would accept me? Do you think it'd be safe for me? Those are all questions, not only for me, for the other officers. Is my detention brought to me going to hurt one of them? Can I put them in that situation? So you're going to resign the force? We don't know that yet. No decisions have been made. But these are all things we're contemplating, ideas, thoughts. What do you want to do going forward? Just live a normal life. Is that possible anymore? It's going to be different. There'll be a new normal, but we'll find it somehow. Is there any way you can turn what you experienced, what you were a part of, into something good? I would love to teach people. I'd love to give people more insight on uses of force and anything I can, anything that I can get out of this career I've had thus far and of the incident. I would love to give someone else. Anything else you've ever wanted to do? Not really. I mean, that was the job of my life. Loved it. I pictured being there on, my only goal was to be promoted to sergeant. That's all I ever wanted. I wanted to stay on the road for 30 years and retire as a sergeant and then just have a retirement. That's all I've ever wanted. You love being a police officer? I love it. You actually got married. We did. And you're about to have a baby as well? Yes. I'm really just a simple guy. That's all I am. Yeah, he got married just, just a few weeks mm -hmm. ago, went to the courthouse. He also talked about he did sometimes go to restaurants and, and, right. and hung out, but he had to be very, very careful, grew a beard uh, for a while. We mm -hmm. should say... You Michael know, Brown's family has, has responded. Spoken They've responded to the news of the mm -hmm. interview. They're not happy. Uh, the mother said she, that they believe that what the officer is saying adds insult uh, to injury. They still don't accept his story. So there's still a lot of um, uh, still a lot of anger out there. A lot of anger on both sides. You know, there's some people who uh, agree with what the officer has said. There are many people, of course, who say that he at least should have been brought into a, a, a trial and had and brought up to charges and, and let a jury, not a grand jury, but a jury decide. But one thing that the police chief there in Ferguson said not, uh, just recently, again, reaffirming that a violent death, regardless of the circumstances, is so tragic. There's, always there's, a tragedy. There's, it's always a tragedy, no, no matter how you look at it. No question about that. We're going to have a lot more of the interview, the entire interview up on our website later this morning on goodmorningamerica.com on Yahoo.